What is going on everybody? It is Bucky and welcome to your 83rd Java tutorial. Now we're actually going to be getting back with GUIs and learning about layouts again after a short break learning about files and uh, exception handling and stuff like that. So in this tutorial I'm going to be teaching you guys about something called flow layout and I know we used it before but this time I really want to show you guys uh, the details of it. So let's go ahead and I'm going to make a program that has some buttons on the screen and depending on what button you click depends on what the flow layout is set as. So let's go ahead and make free three variables. Uh, they're all going to be private so private J button and I'll just name this uh, like left button and go ahead and copy that and we're going to name one CB and RB and this is going to stand for center button and right button so I uh, change this to CB this is going to be center button and this is going to be the right button right there so now that we have three buttons or at least three variables what we need is a flow layout and a container object so go ahead and make a private flow layout and you can name yours anything you want I'm gonna name mine layout because it's easy to remember and also we need a private container object and I'm gonna name container just like that make sure I spell it right and it looks good enough so now we can go ahead and build our constructor and my class is named layout so I'm gonna name public layout for my method and this will be my constructor so again first thing we do since we're extending jframe we can go ahead and build our title using super and I'm just gonna name the title because I'm that original and next we need to go ahead and set our layout object that we created right up here uh, with flow layout We'll set layout equal to new flow layout. And this pretty much means we want our layout to go from when we put things in there like buttons, we want them to be arranged from left to right, kind of like Microsoft Word would do it. So now that we made our new flow layout, and we're actually going to be changing this depending on what button we press, but for now, that's good. So now after this we need to set our container object equal to something so container and set this equal to get content pane which pretty much means get the bulk of your window and this is pretty much just so it knows where to put the stuff so now let's go ahead and set that layout so we'll set the layout equal to layout and this pretty much means layout equals set layout new flow layout so I mean simple enough now let's go ahead and we can finally do stuff with our buttons this is pretty much creating a window now let's add some stuff in it so first thing we need is equal left button set that equal to new J button and give it something to put in the button and what goes in your parameters for new j button is the text that's going to appear on the button so my but i have a button on the screen now that says left on it so now let's go ahead and add that to the screen i just kidding i didn't have it oh but now i do have it on my screen it says i just added it so now we set it gave it some content and we added it to our screen Next, let's add some functionality to this. So we do this by lb dot add action, and look at that, it already made it for us. Add action listener. Now we can either write an object in here or to make things easier, let's use an anonymous inner class. And you see it said method um well it didn't give us yet but it needs to use um, a new action listener and this is the class 
and this is again anonymous inner class if I change that and now if you highlight this it says it must implement the method action listener action performed so if it told us to do it let's just do it we're easily influenced so let's just go ahead and put something like well, let's go to our method first before we start thinking about that. Public void action performed and for our parameter type action event events. And now we can go ahead and add some functionality to this. And what do we want to happen whenever we click this left button? Finally, after all of this adding, we finally get to the meat right here, the body of our action perform method. What do we want to happen when we click the button? Well, well first of all, we want to change that layout. Since we click the left button, let's go ahead and set the alignment. And we got a nice little shortcut right there. And what you set it to is flow layout dot left. And what this is going to do is take your entire layout for your window not just this button not just this button but the entire layout and change everything to left alignment so by default it's going to be in the center of the screen and when you click this it's going to be on the left so next the only thing we need to do is put layout that we just uh, changed put layout container which is pretty much our container and go ahead and pass container in this and this pretty much means rearrange everything depending on what our layout is so now we did this for the left now we can just go ahead and do this two more times and make it real easy to copy it so I'm actually gonna add a comment so I don't get confused just put left stuff in here in here so now let's go ahead and copy everything included in that comment and put um, center stuff in here and change this to center button add center button to the screen add a action listener for center button and change the flow layout to center which is the default but again we need to do that now we need to do it for the right so let's put right stuff in here and add the right button to the screen add an action listener for the right button again the center button and the right button were a lot quicker so and not that easy house and now let's go ahead and run this program so what I well I'll tell you guys what I did after I run it I know you guys are probably getting antsy so let's go ahead and run this baby and here's what I got whoa forgot to change my text on my button quite embarrassing so this is left stuff and I put left center again don't forget when you create your buttons to do that embarrassing so let's go ahead and now oh my god look at this program here is my window that I just created right here and as you can see it doesn't matter if it resizes it or not it automatically rearranges from left to right and if you run out of room it stacks it under each other so now if you see if I click left it changes it to left right changes it to right and center changes it to center and you can see even if we do this then we get right left center so it doesn't really matter how big your window is it just knows the flow layout depending on the size um, where do I want stuff arranged so that's pretty much the basics of flow layout and one more time let's see how much time I have on my tutorial about two minutes so let me go ahead and walk you guys through this um, we created three variables for the buttons and we actually created a flow layout and container object because we needed them um, this is just housekeeping stuff for creating a window in your constructor and let's just go over one of these we added 
pretty much some we set the left button variable equal to a button since you know why not then we added that button to the screen and then all of this pretty much is just saying alright what do you want to happen when you click this button and what did we want to happen we wanted to change the layout and then we wanted just to reset the container using that so and then we just did it for the center and right button and here's my main in case you forgot um, I included Java X swing because that's the window and well you can see all that you guys already know what this does already hopefully if you watch my tutorials so that is that for this tutorial thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time oh by the way we're gonna be creating games soon so um you know just thought I'd uh, let you guys know. But anyways, thank you guys for watching, and uh, don't forget to subscribe.